Hi, I'm Alan Grau, and I'm the president and co-founder of Icon Labs. Icon Labs is a software company providing security solutions for embedded and IoT devices. We've partnered with Renesas to build integrated security solutions to allow you to more quickly and easily add security to your embedded devices. In this video today, we're going to talk about authentication and secure communication, how those can be quickly and easily added to your device to ensure that it can be protected from cyber attacks. Anytime you connect an embedded device to a network, it's going to be subject to a wide variety of security risks. And with the IoT, it's all about connectivity, so we know our devices are going to be connected. Some of the security risks that we'll be talking about in this presentation are eavesdropping attacks, man in the middle attacks, and unauthorized access or control. Really, anything you can do across the network to access or disrupt a device. We'll also cover a little bit on product cloning and how to protect against that. As you know, embedded controllers can be entry points for cyber attacks. The Stuxnet virus worked by propagating information across the network and across USB sticks. The German steel mill that was attacked was as a result of hackers coming in through the corporate network and then being able to move unilaterally throughout the control network or the operational network without any defenses in place. And of course, in the target data breach, once hackers were inside the network, they were able to communicate with the embedded devices with impunity. In order to control the access to our devices, we need to ensure that we've got both secure communication and authentication. Securing communication is really a matter of adding the right protocols to control and encrypt the communication with our device. TLS and its cousin DTLS, or Data Link TLS, are commonly used protocols in embedded devices. Depending on your use case, other protocols may be appropriate. SSH, IPsec, and IKE are often used in IP networks, and many of the wireless standards have their own communication security protocols. In terms of authentication for embedded devices, there's really two types of authentication. The first is user authentication. Is a human being who's trying to access the device authorized to do so? The traditional method is simply to use a password management system. The key here is to actually implement strong passwords. Every year there's a number of new data breaches in, in which passwords are discovered. And if you do the research and go read them, it's always the same passwords that are used over and over again. They never change. People are inclined to use the easiest password possible. And if you allow your users to do this, then your devices will be easily breached with simple dictionary attacks. Depending on the device you're building and the nature of its use, other types of authentication might make sense. Biometric authentication could be used or a second factor authentication mechanism. The other type of authentication mechanism is machine to machine authentication. So how do you know that your device is talking to another machine that's really authorized to perform the action that it's trying to perform, that's really who it says it is. And oftentimes this is done using certificates and public key infrastructure. When looking at the PKI infrastructure we want to adopt, we also have to decide whether we want to use a public or a private certificate authority. And certificate management for the IoT, again, we can use the public certificate authority and this is what my web browser uses when I go to Amazon.com to make a purchase. My web browser verifies that the website, Amazon.com, is really who it says it is by validating its certificate. And it's reliant on a public certificate authority as part of that process. So this enables what we call worldwide trust and requires external integration with a public certificate authority. And this model may be appropriate for an IoT device. The other approach is to use a private certificate authority, essentially having a certificate authority that works in a closed world so that all the devices that are enrolled with that certificate authority can validate each other using certificates but without reliance on any external third party. The other factor is that when I go to Amazon.com, Amazon.com doesn't use a certificate to validate me. It requires me to enter my username and password to verify that I am who I say I am. In the embedded world, in the IoT world, when we do machine-to-machine -machine authentication, each device has a certificate, so we can do what is called mutual authentication, so each device can validate the other. Obviously, in machine-to-machine -machine authentication, you don't have a user entering a password or providing biometric authentication, so the two-way authentication is performed using certificates. The other thing needed, then, is the device-side support. So the certificate authority 
provides the management structure and the PKI for distributing certificates, validating certificates, and managing certificates. But the device itself must have the ability to securely store, validate, and use certificates, and must support things such as SCPE or other certificate authority protocols in this process. Security is a critical requirement for building IoT devices. And this includes both secure communication and strong authentication for users and devices. Icon Labs and Renesas have partnered to provide an integrated security solution for IoT devices to help you more quickly and easily build security into your device. You can go to the Synergy Gallery and download our demonstration solutions and try them out today. Mm -hmm.